Hey Games Radar, I'm here with Senior Associate Producer Tom Hewlett of uh, Silent Hill Downpour. Um, so Tom, can you uh, give us a little background on uh, where we're starting out here? So this is the first time Murphy enters Silent Hill. Uh, at E3, we've shown the diner, which is basically the first area of the game. Uh, at the other events since then, we've shown the Devil's Pit, which is the second area. And then after the Devil's Pit, Murphy finally gets to Silent Hill proper, which is where we're picking up. So how would you compare this Silent Hill to previous Silent Hill uh, towns? Um, so our town's much bigger. Uh, something that we really wanted to bring back from the first couple games is the big town area to explore. It kind of went away uh, in Silent Hill 3. And it's kind of a shame because it's called Silent Hill. It's nice to be able to walk around the town. So <coughs> excuse me. we uh, brought back the big town area and we have populated it with more things to do. In the old in the old games, you basically just ran around picking up items and you couldn't go inside anywhere, um, which doesn't really work in a modern game. So we added side quests, um, buildings to explore, you'll find, you know, story notes in there. So there's a lot of incentive for players who care about that to really find every corner of town. Uh, what about the protagonist, Murphy? How does he how does he compare? Well, um, like all the good Silent Hill protagonists, he's kind of a troubled guy. Um, he starts off the game in prison, and his, he's being transported on a bus, which crashes in, outside Silent Hill. So, you know, he's got some problems. He ended up in jail, after all. Um, I'm not really going to tell you more than that, because that's for the player to find out. But uh, there's plenty of psychological trauma for Murphy. <laughs> Did you compare him to like James Sunderland at all, maybe? Yeah, um, I mean, with with the caveat of uh, fans always want to criticize a game for being just Silent Hill 2 again. Um, it's not that, but like James, um, he will have to face his demons in his past. Seems like he knows his way around an axle, maybe a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> a little better. We uh, really wanted to fine tune the combat, not to make the player fight more, um, like Homecoming attempted, but more just to make, when you do engage in combat, it's responsive, um, you know, they feel like the player's doing what they want them to. It's not, a, it's not a battle just to get them to fight. Um, hopefully we've achieved that, and that'll draw in some new mainstream players who won't be frustrated with the controls. So what would you say, um, the uh, percentages like between puzzles and, and combat in downpour? <sighs> I don't have an exact percentage per se, but uh, I'd say maybe, let's say 30% combat and 70% exploration puzzles, atmosphere, what have you. Um, something we have done with the combat is, you know, this axe, you'll notice it never went into some inventory where I keep all my weapons. It's just in Murphy's hand. That's basically his weapon inventory. Um, so, this axe is probably the strongest weapon in the game, so it'll take a while, but it will eventually break, and then I'll be left with nothing, and I'll have to find a new weapon to replace it. Is there an indicator on the weapon damage? Or you just... If you look closely at the weapons, you'll notice, you know, some cracks or, you know, them bending, but there's not, like, a HUD-type thing to f come up and tell you. Uh, what was that thing that uh, Murphy just fought? That was the Screamer. Um, as you saw, it kind of screamed and disoriented him. Um, that's the first creature you'll encounter, and it's it's the easiest to kill. So it was a relatively simple encounter. So I see it's raining now. Uh, is that part of the water motif in uh, Silent Hill Downpour? Yeah, so something in Murphy's past, obviously, uh, has to do with water. So as you're exploring the town, it'll gradually rain. It's sprinkling and now it's a little bit heavier than that um that will actually affect how many creatures are coming out how much danger murphy's in so the harder it's raining the you know the more you'll want to get indoors and wait out the storm so you know he can duck into buildings through doors through a basement hatch what have you and that's a way we can guide players hey you should be exploring a little bit don't just stay out in the rain don't just run to your next objective you know take a look around 
Um, it is optional. You can stay on the rain. You can fight hordes of monsters if you're good and, you know, come out the other side when the rain dies down. But it's not advised. <laughs> yeah, how does the health work in this game? So like the old games, there isn't a big health meter that pops up um, to take you out of the game experience. But uh, Murphy's clothes will gradually have blood accumulate on them. And, you know, he'll, he'll stumble. Um, and that's your cue, like he's in trouble and he looks hurt. So then you can, you know, use a health pack. Um, right now I'm looking pretty good. But, you know, we do that so the player doesn't isn't thinking, I'm playing a video game, my health is low. They're just in the experience. So what kinds of things are there to uh, explore on the, in the, in the buildings? Well, we've got side quests, um, which aren't required, but they will provide, you know, new story information on the town, on the greater universe. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons for fans to check those out. Um, also, you know, weapons and just story notes that might tie into the story, but aren't crucial. Um, so again, if you're not into that, you just want to sort of play the main game, you can skip all of it, but you'll have less fun and you won't have as much story. So at this point, is he just trying to find a way out or like what's his objective right now? So he just got into town. He wants to get away from the area. Again, he's as far as he knows, he's on the run you know, from the law and, and needs to get out. Um, when, he, when I entered town, I heard a weird radio broadcast that mentioned my name. So... He's a little curious about that, um, but at the moment, he just wants to get out of town. And on my map, I've come to an area with a question mark. There must be something here to explore. So do the radios play a role in, in the story or the gameplay? Yes, I will eventually meet the person on the other end of the radio um, once I find my way to their source. And again, our weapon system uh, lets me use a lot of weapons as tools, which again forces us, or lets, lets us force the player to let go of a weapon he might have been holding on to for a while, because he needs to use another one to advance. And we can play with fear that way and keep him off guard. Uh, how many different weapons uh, approximately uh, are there in the game? Uh, we did a count at one point, I would say around 50, oh God. but that might include Why if I have a chair... Um, and I use it, it'll break apart and I'll have a chair leg. So that might be two weapons. Because they'll behave differently um, and I'll have to use different strategies. So is there a reason why he's switching those radios off? Or? Just showing the interactivity. <laughs> so in this apartment building, I could just rush through, you know, to the bottom and go on to the next area of town. But if I explore thoroughly, I will encounter a note to kick off a side quest. A thief, huh? So something we've done, uh, again, from the old Silent Hills, is we have have separate settings for combat difficulty versus puzzle difficulty. So, you know, if you like fighting a lot but you don't like thinking, you can set them accordingly. But if you really don't like fighting and you love puzzles, then you can set it the opposite. Um, but we've done more than just tie that into the actual literal puzzles themselves. There's a lot of new modern game conceits like objectives and must be things like that to lead the player through. So we thought, rather than forcing those on the player, we'll tie them into the puzzle difficulty. So if I set puzzles to easy, I'll have the objectives walking me through each step of the game. I'll know exactly where I need to go, what to do. If I trigger a side quest, the objective will tell me I'm in a side quest. If I have puzzles set to hard, I won't see as many of those. I might have, a, I might have the objective escape town, and that's it. So if I come across a side quest like this then, 
I won't really know I'm in a cycle, so I'll have to figure it out for myself. And so, hopefully the hardcore Silent Hill fans who like that sort of thing will have that, and then mainstream gamers who maybe aren't used to that sort of style will have objectives and a more comfortable environment. Is there an incentive to completing the side quests, or is that just for people who want to explore around more? Um, there's, there's various incentives. So obviously we have achievements uh, tied into them. Um, you'll get story details, or you'll get uh, a bunch of health packs or a cool weapon, uh, as well as you know less in-game rewards. There might be new options opening up on the main menu, things like that. So we've tried to tie in a, ver a variety of different reasons to check out SideQuest. <laughs> Definitely not what I intended. Still in town, I see. Just haven't found a way out. Yet. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I heard that. Yeah? Then what? Well, let's just say I could finally put this damn bag down, for starters. Man, cut the bullshit. What is this place? Can't say I understand the question. This is a busy town. Do you think these letters deliver themselves? Whatever. Can you at least tell me where the radio station is? Someone's been calling in, making these... <laughs> dedications to me. Oh, sure. That'd be the tall building in the center of town. Big old monster of a clock at the top. Shouldn't be hard to find. By the way... I ran into that lady friend of yours. What in the world you do to get that young woman so riled up anyway? She was fit to be tied. Tell you the truth, I got no idea. <laughs> Son, in my experience, when someone's that angry, it ain't a mistake. It's personal. So it seems like he knows what's going on. Can you tell us a little bit about that character? So that's Howard. Uh, he's a postman that Murphy encounters a couple times. And yeah, he's pretty mysterious. Uh, he appeared in the recent Silent Hill graphic novel from about a year ago, which took place in the 1800s. So there's something weird about Howard. <laughs> um, he's a character we, we hope players uh, come to like, um, as he also appears in Book of Memories on the Vita. So he's here to stay, and uh, players will have to discover what his deal is exactly. Would you say he's good or bad? Is he, is he going to help Murphy, or more of a, of a bystander? Uh, he definitely helps Murphy, um, sort of points him in the right direction. Is he good per se? I don't know. He, he knows what's going on in Silent Hill. So he's heading to the radio station now? Yes. Um, Howard pointed out that it's got a big clock at the top. So now I'm trying to find that building. See the fog coming in a little bit. Yep, it's Silent Hill, so there's got to be fog. <laughs> um, as I'm running, you can kind of see a, a bunch of different weapons. There were some bottles I could pick up, which obviously break. The player will have a lot of options for weapons, but... It's that moment of when it breaks and he's in trouble. He's got to figure out what to do. Can he do hand-to-hand -hand melee as well? Yeah, so if you don't have a weapon, he can you know, just punch creatures. But since they're otherworldly creatures and he's just a guy, um, obviously that won't be very effective. It's, it's more a way to knock him down and run away than it is to actually do any serious damage. So what's going on right now with the red bug, actually? That's that's a thing that we are changing. <laughs> it looks scary. It is pretty scary. Scarier for me, but it's... <laughs> so when can we expect a downpour to come out, and for what systems? So Silent Hill Downpour is coming to PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 on March 6th of 2012. So look for more coverage of Silent Hill Downpour, Silent Hill Book of Memories, and HD Collection on GamesRadar.com.